So that big collapse is back there at the 1660. And I climbed over that and came into here. And it looks like a large ore chute failed right here, as best I can tell. There's a ton of water cascading down. It might have kept going back there, but that's, that's it. There's a look up where all the water's coming from. I can't tell much else. So that failed ore chute or the face or whatever it was, or both, is back over this mess. This is all, this isn't a stope. This is all material that's caved down from here. You can see all the the timber supports in front of me, that uh, post right there, that, that was the original height of this section and all this material has caved down. And like I said, that section I just showed you is right behind that. So I'm, you're not missing anything. Behind me, you can see where we came in, uh, climb over that, that mess right there. That's the 1660 mess. There's this here, there's really deep water actually, to my surprise. I was just standing over there filming a moment ago. Pulled back a little bit more. You can see one of the old timber sets here. There's a little side pocket right there, but that's it. Um, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything to show you guys. Uh, there's some lots of scraps of wood and metal tossed around back here this is what it looks like behind me again that's a 1660 collapse that's the other side of the 1660 collapse right there old bucket right there i'll show you this view from the other side i was just standing over there i'm standing on the 1660 collapse right now uh, that old bucket i showed you is right there you see a carbide container right there you even see where it says carbide on it which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. A power cable right there. This section here is 16. All these slabs that came down. This is the 1660 collapse. Let me side up more and I'll show you better. I was just standing down there a moment ago. You can see all the, the quartz here. This is the 1660 collapse. And I've shown you the other side of this over there before. This is a good view up. So you can see how far the stope ran up. And you can also see what failed. The stuff that failed came off of that section there. But the stope itself runs up there. See the quartz vein there? That's what they were working on. That's probably 50 feet up or so. And then again, this is the stuff that slabbed out that I'm on top of now. So there's the, the quartz vein. And something I didn't notice before, that I noticed when I was climbing over the stuff down there, uh, the way squeezing is through there on, on the other side that rock there there's a it looks like the remains of a winds dropping down which would make sense if they were falling the quartz vein down through there so that's what is behind this section back at the 1600 workstation some of the local wildlife that's making a home back here
So this is it, first load of muck rolling out. You can see I'm taking another load of waste rock out. And something I want to show you and neglected to show you before is how we connect cars. And it's really simple. We have this bar here and these pins which lift in and out and so now if I were to pull the trammer forward the bar would simply pull away from the car and it would be separated so drop it back in and it's connected literally that simple and same thing here with the pin right there bar disconnect okay the bar would disconnect come out that's that simple so the uh, the guy, the miner, back at the heading right now is loading up another ore car full of muck and then I'm taking this one out and I'll take this empty one back in and take the one he's filling up now out. So we've got a pretty good system going. Hopefully that makes sense. View the uh, tram right here. All right, back at it. I realized I should probably give a little tour of the trammer and how it operates. So I'll start with this in front of me here. And this is a battery box. And just like it sounds, it's full of batteries. And what we do is, you can't see from here, uh, but there are bolts on the side. And we simply unbolt those and lift this entire box off. And we've got several others that are charging. And so this particular one is pretty good. This one we can get a full shift out of. Some of the other boxes of batteries, eh, they'll get eight hours or so but anyway the point is is that we can swap these in and out uh, just by lifting them up and putting a new one in and connecting these wires and that wire and bolting it back in it takes just a few minutes to swap it out so it's pretty efficient so what we're seeing here i'll start the switches oh this thing here this is what we use to lift it up when we're um, swap them out we'll hook a chain through here and there's a matching one on the other side and we'll just lift it out and plop it back down i forgot to mention got a fire extinguisher right there in case you couldn't tell what that was we've got switches here that's pretty self-explanatory pretty loud these are the lights so just turned on that light and it's pretty bright as you can see so I just turned it off. That's off. That's on. So it's pretty bright. And this other switch, those are the front lights. Of course, the view is being blocked by the ore car right now, but it's off. Now, in front of me, this is my brake. I've got the brake engaged right now because I'm stopped. But when I'm ready to go again, you just twist this, which I'll do right now. Pretty tight. So just, I'll get distracted because I dropped my gloves. So this is the brake disengaged, and this is the brake engaged. Now what's by my foot is a dead man switch. You see I have it depressed right now. And that means that if I operate the controls, engage the controls, I should say, I'll go somewhere. If I lift my foot off, nothing happens. See, I'm engaging the controls. Nothing's happening. And that's in case 
you know, somebody's operating, they fall off, they get, they hit their head on something, they get knocked off, what have you, it stops automatically, it doesn't just keep going um, with that dead man switch in place. So, re-engage that. As I alluded to, this is the control mechanism. So it says reverse, forward, and then if I move it a little, I'm gonna disengage the dead man switch again. If I move it that much, I go, it's just like an accelerator on a vehicle, you know, I go somewhat, start rolling a little bit, that's even faster, and that's as fast as it'll go forward. And same thing in reverse. So a little bit reverse, more reverse, more reverse, as fast as it'll go reverse. So I'll demonstrate that by going slowly forward right now. So that is the that's the slowest one, as you can see. And I'll kick it up a notch. Go a little bit faster. A little bit more. And that gets us moving pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and back that off. Re-engage the brake. Anytime you stop, you want to engage the brake. It's just like you know, like an emergency brake or parking brake on a vehicle. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, pretty much any vehicle. I was thinking of fire engines or trucks or anything like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, just seeing if I've forgotten anything. Of course, got the bumper here in the back. Got the pin right there if I want to, uh, you know, attach and work hard something here. Just run the bar in there, lift this pin up, run it in there, and then. Drop it back down, which of course it's not going to cooperate right now. There we go. So that's the basic operating procedures for the trammer. So we'll get back to. We've just been mucking out a ton of stuff. That's all. I, pretty much all I did yesterday. Um, pretty much all I'm doing today. I just hauling ore car load after ore car load after ore car load out of waste rock. So. The guys are back loading an ore car right now. I'm bringing an empty one. As soon as I get back there, we'll swap out this empty one for the full one. I'll pull that one back out and so on and so forth. So while I'm hauling it out, they're loading. So we're always in motion and keeping a really steady stream of waste rock going out. Sometimes when you're tramming out, this happens. And what we're looking at here is a pretty bad derailment. You see it all four wheels are completely off and those are sunk down pretty deep along the rail. Two of us tried to get this out and that's what this block of wood and the bar is doing there and unfortunately the way is resting in the rails like that when we pry up here it's getting ready to tip over completely to the left here so I've gone to get more muscle because this will be a three or four man job most likely but all part of the fun I'm actually not sure why it derailed because there aren't, weren't any bumps or anything along here uh, often measure the rail so it might be a little wide right there anyway all part of the fun doesn't always go smoothly in and out. In fact, very few things go smoothly in mining. And this is a good example of that. Right. Look at the waste rock in case anybody's curious. This is from a round that we shot just before we left yesterday evening. Here's that Five. section we cleared out, all the muck. This is the face right now, you see all the holes are drilled. Ready for blasting. It's from the water coming out of that one. 
So we're curious what's going to happen when we shoot it. But you can see pretty clearly where the muck waste rock had piled up to. So they did a good job getting that all cleared out. Yeah. Just a little bit there, but it's not really in the way there. But the job for today is to run the rail back toward the face here, bend it around there, gonna dig out a bunch of notches for ties. And then bend the rail and get it back here and then we'll, at some point we're gonna fire off next round of explosives. Push keep pushing this farther back.